Hey everyone, welcome back. In this ISTQB Foundation exam question and answer video, I'm going to cover another five exam questions with detailed explanation. So let's go ahead and this is the third set that I'm covering with detailed explanation, which will definitely help you to understand the exam structure, how the questions are and how you're going to attempt the exam to, to make sure that your chances of passing the exam are absolutely on a higher end. Okay, so question number six or first question of this particular video says, which of the following statements about the different testing roles is most likely to be correct? Okay, so most likely to be correct about the different testing roles. So let's go through and we have to select one option out of the four options that are shown here. So if we go ahead with the first one in agile software development, the test management role is primary is the primary responsibility of the team while the testing role is primarily the responsibility of a single individual from outside the team. Absolutely incorrect statement. Right. So in agile software development, testing responsibility or testing, this is not specific, whatever this particular statement is saying that testing role is primarily the responsibility of a single individual outside the team. That's not correct. It's within the team and it's quality is everyone's responsibility within agile. So that's the incorrect option. Now, the second say second one uh, says the testing role is primarily responsible for test monitoring and control while the test management role is primarily responsible for test planning and completion okay that's also incorrect but let's keep it as is and we eliminate others or we go through the others in agile software development test management activities that span multiple teams are handled by a test manager outside the team okay yes uh, while some test management tasks are handled by the team itself by far this is the most closest answer about the testing role in agile software Software development because they are talking about agile software development so let's mark it just put a dot there and then the last one says the test management role is primarily responsible for test analysis and design while testing role is primarily responsible for test implementation and execution no not at all test management role is completely different so this is absolutely incorrect statement now this leaves with two statements so the first uh, the, the B option was the testing role is primarily responsible for test Test monitoring and control while the test management role is primarily responsible for test planning and completion test completion no that's also not correct right there is not such segregation so the only correct answer is C in agile software development usually the test management activities there if there are multiple teams in agile software development so there will be a test manager outside the team who will be managing the, the test management activities across the teams however some test management tasks will also be handled within the team itself okay so c is the correct answer for this particular question okay now moving to the next question of this particular video which of the following is an advantage of the whole team approach okay what is the advantage of the whole team approach we have to select one option so go through these four options teams with no testers no that's not what agile or whole team approach says teams with no testers that's not what agile is all about improve team dynamics yes this is positive statement about whole team approach so this might be the correct answer but let's see others as well specialist team members no not at all that's not what whole team approach says larger team sizes not at all okay so straight away you can see that improve team dynamics is what the correct answer is the advantage of whole team approach okay so B is the correct answer for this second question or question number seven of this particular set. Now moving to the next question, question eight of this set and third of this particular video, which of the following statements about the independence of testing is correct. Okay. Independence of testing is correct. This is the syllabus. I mean, everything is from the syllabus. So if you go through the syllabus and, and read the detail and go through the course, you will be easily be able to answer these questions, right? So independence of testing is correct. So first option says, and we have to select one option, right? So independent testers will find defects due to their different technical perspective from developers, but their independence may lead to an adversary adversarial relationship with the developers okay yes let's keep it aside developers familiarity with their own code means they only find a few defects in it however their shared software background with testers
errors means these defects would also be found by the testers. That's absolutely baseless statement. We'll cross that out. Okay. Independent testing requires testers who are outside the developers team and ideally from outside the organization. However, these testers find it difficult to understand the application domain. So first part looks okay, but then the last part is not correct. Even if the testers are independent and outside the organization, this statement is incorrect, finding it difficult to understand the application domain. So that is why we know that this is not the correct answer. Testers will be able to understand the domain and application. That's not the correct statement about independence of testing. Okay. So the last option of this testers from outside the developers team are more independent than testers from within the team, but the testers from within the team are more likely to be blamed for delays in product release. That's absolutely negative statement blaming for delays or blame game. That's incorrect as well. And that means we are left with one option answer A and that's the correct option. If you read it again, you will clearly be able to understand and see that this is the correct statement about the independence of testing. Independent testers will find defects due to their different technical perspective, right? Because when the testers are within the team itself, working closely with the with the developers, the perspective is not different from a person who is absolutely uh, from outside the team and interacting with the particular software, right? So that's why from they, they have different technical perspective from developers, but their independence may lead to an adversarial relationship with the developers. That's also true because independent testers will be because there is they are not working closely with the developers. So they will be going ahead and from their technical perspective and expertise, they will be raising the issues and defects with much more freedom and authority, I would say, which might hamper or, or lead to an adversarial relationship with the developer. So this is the correct answer. Now moving to the fourth question of this particular video or ninth question of this particular set, which of the following is a good testing practice that applies to all software development life cycles. Okay. So good testing practice that applies to all SDLCs. We have to select one option. So for first option says for each test level, there is a corresponding development level. That's absolutely baseless statement, right? For every, every SDLC level, there should be, you know, mostly there is a test level or basically a testing activity. So this is not correct statement or correct way to make this particular statement. The next is for each test objective, there is a corresponding development objective. No, that's not true. For every software test activity, there is a corresponding user activity. Absolutely not right. For every test activity, there is uh, there won't be necessarily a user activity, right? Because testing activity, you have you know, the, the unit test, you have functional test, you have the API test, right? So there, there is not necessarily a user activity or end user activity for each testing activity. So that's incorrect as well. We have left with one option for every software development activity there is a corresponding test activity right so every development activity should be having a corresponding test activity and it applies to all software development life cycle and is a good testing practice to have testing involved early for each of the activities or development activities that happen for the product life cycle now moving to the last question of this particular video which of the following is an example of the test first approach to development test first approach okay so test first approach test driven development is a test first approach but here it is basically there are a lot of other options so you have to select one option so what is the test first approach for development component test driven development integration test driven development system test driven development acceptance test driven development so ATDD right so this is basically what the test first approach is ATDD and none of these are the test driven development approach or test first approaches okay so there is nothing component test driven or integration test driven system test driven it's actually acceptance test driven development and straight away with these sort of questions you should be very quickly come up to the answer with just because here you know ATDD is what test first approach is for development and that's where we have chosen this particular answer so that's all for this particular video in which I have covered another five question and answer for ISTQB foundation level. In the next video, I'll cover another five question with detailed explanation that will help you in your ISTQB foundation exam. So that's all. See you in the next one. Thank you.